floor if they want to go back to the Ziggs pick. And I think the nice thing about this for the Marines is that they don't actually have to first pick the Ziggs because SKT is so unlikely to take oh, yeah, exactly. their rotation. So I don't think you first pick the champion. I think you take your choice of jungler here, whether it's the Lisa in the Graves, whatever you do prefer, and then you can grab up something like that uh, Ziggs a little bit later on. Yep. All right, Graves is going to be locked in. First pick here for Levi. Not going to be the car Ziggs, which he had such a fantastic performance on in his WE game earlier today. How does SK Telecom reply? Because there's a lot available to them. I think AD Jungle is, is a rotation that makes sense. Uh, teams would normally go like Tom Kenshly in here in the recent meta. The problem is if you play Tom Kench, you're gonna get hard shoved by this potential Ziggs that comes out. So, yeah. could go any direction, but that's usually what we see. Yeah, Rumble is something that a lot of top laners are talking about as a really safe blind pick that they feel is strong in a lot of different matchups. So, you know, Huni has the confidence to just lock this in, and, and you can certainly expect third pick for SKT will be the least in. I mean, Puna is undefeated on it, so why not grab that? But now to get my Marine side, it's time to find out if Ziggs is coming out. Yeah, whether Ziggs is coming out early, because it has to be here, otherwise it will be banned out in the second ban phase. But I, I would love to see, like, a Ziggs Cled rotation here. It gives them their signature kind of rapid movement, uh, a gameplay pattern that they can use. Uh, Kennen is also a fine pick in the Rumble. Let's not forget that. I actually, from talking to people, I was like, hmm, Rumble? Not that safe, because we saw it punished. But maybe a, a top laner of Huni's caliber can actually make that pick work. You know, we'll have to find out. Let's see what Stock can do on this cannon. It is locked in after being banned against him so many times. Yeah. Huni, 9 and 0 on Rumble this year. So let's see what the Marines can fire at them. Ziggs, not locked in yet or not hovered. There's going to be the Bard, Archie. You're going to be able to cast his bot this time around. He played it uh, yesterday phenomenally well. And uh, yeah, I mean, especially in the early game, I think he was really doing a lot, moving around the map well, having great success there. Uh, the question now becomes, is SKT actually worried about the Ziggs, or are they fine dealing with that? Will they actually ban it out here, or perhaps target something like the mid lane a little bit to give Faker an advantage with the next pick? Yeah, does Faker need an advantage, though? That is the uh, question. I mean, you could does just he want an advantage? Yeah, if you ban Echo, yes. if you ban Echo Fizz, you can first pick Syndra, and I think uh, Optimus will have a really hard time finding an answer then. Oh, such a difficult situation for the Marines to be in. Counter pick options to SK Telecom. AD Carry still needs to get secured. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. I don't think he needs an advantage. That's the um, Faker ban. This is the 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 Garen Galio. Yep. He but you gotta gotta move away from the Galio because he's actually a good champion now. <laughs> This is what he was known for, though, in solo queue. He started actually first banning uh, Garen out all the time. And a really funny thing happened during Worlds last year in NA is people started dodging anytime Garen was first banned because they assumed it's it was Aatrox. It was Aatrox. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. Because in, in, Korean, in, Korean, in Korean server, Korean. it's, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, it's yeah. Garen Galio because those those champions are first uh, in the phonetics, in the language. Yeah. problem is in, on the NA server, it's like Aatrox Annie. So when you see Aatrox ban, it's Faker. People were actually... Uh, Faking Faker. They're yeah, like, so people would dodge against. Damn, my team is stacked with four support mates. What do we do? Ban Aatrox. <laughs> Assume Faker position, and the enemy mid laner was like, I, I ain't dealing with this stuff. I'm dodging. <laughs> well, I'm still seeing big smiles on the side of SKT. Peanut definitely having a, a good time of it on his Lee Sin as well for the ninth time uh, this year. Correction, 13th time this year. Cogmo was the next ban from SKT. Not exactly the biggest uh, protect the Cog style on the side of Gigabyte Marines. Before we assume massive disrespect from SKT, though, Technically, I feel like Garen would be an okay pick into Rumble. If Stark has spammed it in his matches theory for whatever goddamn reason, that could be the one caveat. Because, like, to me, SKT and Koma don't sound like a team that, like, troll ban against wildcard teams. No, I don't think that's a thing that SKT would ever do, especially when they're on the path for their first perfect tournament. They would need to go 16 0 for that to happen. Bang's gonna lock in Twitch. And now the Marines have to reveal their AD carry and their mid laner that will be blind. That Faker will be able to counter pick. Ooh, that's always such a tough position, I think, uh, for Optimus to put himself into. Six Syndra, I think, is the, the safest you can do. Like, Ori is technically the safe mid pick, but against a player of fake Faker's caliber, I think you just get you just get slapped around. So I would love to go Six uh, Syndra here and just you go ham. Like, you push in this very short range twitch in the bottom lane negating all the all-in pressure if you can somehow find peanut in the jungle and you don't get ganked it could actually fit their style i do agree that syndra is a pretty good blind but we have to remember that echo was not banned out so echo is going to be available for faker here too uh, which can be pretty tough just uh win the game in the first five levels right okay. that's where syndra yeah, is still fine into echo <laughs> 
And otherwise, it's Before over. he uses TP, just first blood faker, no yeah. problem. Not going to be Syndra, going to be a slightly safer pick, one that can impact side lanes as well. It's the Talia. Remember the last time Marines played SK Telecom? They got ahead in the early game, the craziness, but they couldn't take towers or objectives. Well, it is safe into some matchups, but Talia is actually very vulnerable into a lot of assassin picks here. So, you know, you, it would be... Yeah, exactly. There's not a lot of crazy stuff uh, they might go for, but something like a Zed is actually really good in this matchup. If he wanted to bring it out, I don't expect it because they are taking this pretty seriously, but... Yeah, an option. Looking at it though, I actually like the Tilia more than the Syndra, so obviously Optimus is much smarter than I am. It's just any matchup where you avoid fighting, you just actually push in is a way to beat a better player. You don't need to beat them by trading. Like the the way you beat a, a challenger player is you gank him with three silvers, you know? Even Challenger can't find his way out there, you know. Same way when you're playing against Faker, you push him in, leave the lane and try and go somewhere else. We saw the the combination of Bartleties, Satchels, and the Talia knockbacks is what they could provide in a team fight. Yeah, and I think it makes a lot of sense as well when you're trying to get side lane pressure, take down the first turret, get a split push advantage for Kennen here too, so you can shove and roam very well and perhaps get an advantage on one of the side lanes, which could be a, a victory condition. Yeah, I mean, even the uh, Spartan 300 were eventually overwhelmed by Spoilers. numbers. Spoilers. Right now, SKT... I was going to watch that movie on the plane, Trevor. <laughs> ...are going to be defending their undefeated record at MSI 2017 group stage here. And of course, this is the second time that the Marines are going to get a shot at the defending world champions, the defending MSI champions, the GOAT of League of Legends. Yeah, you saw the ref dragging Koma away. He's like, no, 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 it's time to go. Stop talking to them. He's like, okay, don't die. Don't get pushed and rolled down. Take it slow and play normal League of Legends. Do not get sucked into the Fiesta. That's exactly what the Marines wanted with this composition. All right, let's see what the Marines can do. There we go. Ken and Graves, Talia, Ziggs, and Abad. The potential for outplays from a million miles away. Mega Inferno, Bomb, Tempid, Fate, Weaver's Wall. There's a lot of options here for the GPL and the Gigabyte Marines. They're taking on LCK's SK Telecom. And you've got to say, the Marines have got a lot of their comfort picks. Yes. You know, Stark was known for his cannon. Slay known for that Ziggs. And Archie showcased a great game on the Ziggs. Or sorry, on the Bard. And, and we have pretty much the tier S jungler. Yeah, and this is the this is also the same core that beat uh, Trick, uh, that beat G2. You know, when Trick face that burst, that was a satchel with a bar Q and um, the Talia knockback right there. So it's a really strong composition. I wonder if they're going for a portal level one because they know they're up against SKT. SKT has been playing very defensive early games. All right, defensive early games. Who's going to potentially run into? some shenanigans, just places a ward down and backs away. I usually don't want to sweep this. They want to give this experience to Talia and to Graves. So Talia sweeps it, Graves needs to hit it. Ooh, they're moving, they're actually moving out so he gets the full experience because the experience is yeah. shared locally. Yeah. So they want to give it all over to Talia there, ever moves away, he gets it. So the reason they do that is so Talia can get level two. I thought personally, if you share the experience, you still get the, the level three path for Graves in order for the early gank, which is uh, red Raptors and Scuttlecrab. And Talia can get level two in the first place, but maybe it's just too little experience to achieve that. And it is also interesting that you know, SKT doesn't really know where the experience went. You have to kind of give the benefit of the doubt now that Talia will get that experience and be level two a little bit faster. They can, however, like still press tab once he comes into lane. Uh, it's usually they know that it's just Talia though. Well, both teams ended up trading halves of the map, but Peanut was oh, stood on, so on top of the Marines ward. Now the Gigabyte Marines have actually started off two lane swaps in the group stage yeah. already. They're doing it again this time against SKT. But SKT scouted in the current metagame. If you're on the lane swap, it's actually kind of necessary that you three buff. But you start on your quarter, but you see double deport from SKT. They match the invade, and Peanut starts on the aggressive side. Also, if there's one team where you want to test your lane swap macro against, it is not SKT. <laughs> And, and it's it's really, I mean, on top of that, you have Ziggs and you have a range of support against Tom Kench and Twitch, something that you think you could yep. pressure. So, I mean, they, they do like to go back to these, but I'm not sure it's always the right choice. Oh, uh, Faker that. did not step back into the seismic shell, but it may not matter. That flash forward. Levi is a monster. That was so well set up. So the early level two from the ward, plus they give him experience from the Raptors. He gets level two so fast. Faker is not expecting it. Levi with the red buff to mid gank. This is so well planned from the Marines. Yeah, look at it. Like, even if he just zones Faker with the knockback. Faker disrespect flashes. He needs to flash much faster here. He just wonders, like, why is this guy level two? The the ward sweep for level two is actually a super valuable strategy. Uh, disrespect or the surprise? No one expects the Marines. This is Levi Stack from earlier today. The Gigabyte Marines took down LPL's Team WE. Now it was a car six. It was what Levi is really known for at the moment. And now he's going to respond to some 
uh, tower pressure from Pina in the bottom lane. So in a normal world, they win out here if Hootie can teleport, but here Levi is playing ultra aggressive. Oh, the Sonic Wave connects. Levi, after being the hero, gets taken down by Peanut. So uh, normally I would think that this is a pretty nice setup from Levi, but he doesn't have Flash. You can't actually do that. And now their top leader is going to get corralled in Dove as well. Oh, he's going down. Winter is coming, and SKT are looking for Stark's head. It's Peanut with his second kill of the game. Yeah, you can never hold in a 2v3 configuration in a lane swap because ultimately, even if SKT play it slow, Huni will teleport down and it'll become a 4v2 dive, which is really easy to accomplish. Also, the other side of that coin, a 2v1 dive is the much harder of the two. <laughs> now, however, right, Stark's go. going top. All right, 3v1 dive. Score. Huni, let's see what can happen. The Cosmic Finding connects, and Stark, after finishing the TP, he secures the kill. One turret shot, two turret shots! Huni gets the trade! He gets the revenge because the turret mounts up. It is definitely not a bug. Sometimes people complain when it happens like that. What happens is first instance of Bark, you hits a target. The target then flashes. The second instance of Bark, you hits the wall and connects the two in the then the current position. That is why you can still get stunned from Bark, you after flashing. I have seen this movie before, gentlemen of SKT versus the Marines. It was around 30 minutes long, around 40 kills deep, and the Marines could not take a single tower. It started in much the same way. Look at this. Huni's in trouble. He's already used that flash, remember, this time round. No binding connects. Peanut, he's going to look for a kill reply. Seven kills, four and a half minutes. Go for it. I mean, the kills are getting traded pretty evenly, but the problem is, look at how much gold is going to be funneled into this Twitch. They already took a turn. More fighting top. Oh, my word. Peanut's got another. He's on a rampage before five minutes on the clock. Slay's run out of oh, mana. Ooh, he went for the smite Q here. Now, Slay looking for the passive auto. Oh, Archie is actually getting pushed oh, really hard for not flashing that initial engage. Peanut, he's getting sucked in here. Sonic Wave connects. Resonating strike for the <laughs> snipe. What can this guy do? 5-0 and oh at five minutes? Peanut is going to take over this game. Oh, man. I, I'm at a loss for words. SKT have already got a 2,000 gold lead. I wonder if all of that is in Peanut's uh, I have a couple pocket. words for you. Undefeated Lee Sin. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he puts the S in SKT for sure. Man, and I'm just sad. I'm just looking at that flash from Archie, and I'm like, Marines, if you just flash the initial Lee Sin Q, flash into your portal, you win the game. <laughs> well, there's a few more things that need to happen. There, but... there is. No, no, you start to win the game, yeah. right? That's maybe it. Did Wolf steal that one as well? He did. That's why the crowd's cheering. Man, even manages to pick up the scuttle crab. Okay, so. Oh, portal, portal, portal. If you're going to try the lane swap game, SKT might not be the team you want to do it against. That was what Cripple you were saying. Let's yeah. find out how the magical journey ends up. No flash and wolf. Vi and Archie starting to spend some time together. Slay's gonna make his way up. Next tech explosives thrown out, but not gonna be enough. So SKT just needs two more kills before 15 minutes to break the MSI record. And I would say they're looking pretty so, good to do sorry, it. Sorry, uh, Peanut needs two more kills. I, I, I think if anyone's gonna get them, Peanut should do it. Okay. He's gonna solo carry Stark. Now looking for Huni. He is a level up though, and he has a frozen wave. So that is the one breaking point for this matchup. We see Optimus going down as well, but here's Peanut. All right, so, uh, gonna get interrupted. Peanut's gonna find at least one of those kills if he can catch Optimus. Sonic Wave needs to connect. The Dragon has been enlisted to help out the Gigabyte Marine. Sonic oh. Wave finds his target. Peanut, 6-0. This is the level five jungler. Willingly engaging on a level six mid laner, but he's telling you, he kicks him off the wall, takes him down. He does have a full warrior in chat at like <laughs> six minutes, so that helps with the decision a little bit. Oh, uh, this, this, it's so difficult to look at the situation because now the Marines are behind in every single role, but they will not feel behind. That is the beauty of the Gigabyte Marines, they don't perceive this gold deficit that you're talking about, Trevor. They just fight, fight, fight. Look, that gold deficit is alternate facts as far as the Marines are concerned. And Levi is now under pressure in his own jungle. All right, who needs to start to invade a little bit without support? Uh, Look at the minimap. Peanut actually was just north of him. Oh, Peanut's gonna find Archie. Gets his seventh kill. I did say Peanut was gonna get them to break the record. Yeah, that is one more kill to tie the record now before 15. Two more to break. It. All right, where is Peanut? I'm following him. Two more to break it. Ten kills before 15 minutes is uh, how they're going to do it. Wolf is going to look for Slay. He solos him 1v1 because, of course, that can happen. Tied for the most kills in MSI history. Optimus may give it up to Peanut to break the record in half the time. So, gentlemen, um, 
I'm, I'm still a little can hurt. Break, can you break this down? I don't like what the Observer did there, panning him back to the Bard Corpse. I feel that's a little, it's a little per personal right here. Like, let's see what happened with Will. Flash Q on the already stacks. We don't even know how this happened. But Slay. It happened very unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunate. That's nice. That's how it happened. It was also interesting and uh, <laughs> unlucky. <laughs> Extremely so. Isaiah, can you confirm for me? Nine kills before uh, at 15. Nine kills for Lee Sin before 15 will break the record. So he is tied with the record right now. Pina has eight before 15, and that is tied with the maximum record. All right, that is ridiculous. Ten kills to three. Dragon was already picked up. It's a 4,000 gold game. Look at the gold differences between every single lane. Only Faker is really sort of lagging behind here yeah. a little bit. A faker, who's that guy anyway? You know, I mean, to be fair, he was ganked for first blood, you know? So that put him behind that, why he doesn't have the same lead that the rest of his team has. Sometimes you gotta take on for a team, you know, when you run that global taunt, you free up your jungler to do whatever he wants. <laughs> uh, global taunt indeed. I'm really hoping we don't see Peanut build a single defensive item this game. All right, teleporting in for Wolf. He's gonna get caught up by a seismic shove. This might be the fourth kill of the game. Because Wolf is running away with that thick skin in the gray outlet. Bang! It's up in the top lane. It's a focus. Collateral damage comes down. Remember those alternate facts of the gold lead? This is Gigabyte Marines proving it! Peanut with a disengage ultimate follows in with the sonic wave and the resonating strike. The record is broken. Now Hooney overheating with a flame splitter. He's looking to get another defensive flash. They're actually doing it, the Gigabyte Marines. These utter nothers are about to ace SKT. They're gonna tell it. Oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. Don't take the journey! Peanut is playing whack-a-mole with the Marines! <laughs> He takes the victory ride back through the portal. Style over substance here for Peanut. He's going nuts. I, I just gotta say, the angle matters when you put that magical journey down. <sighs> Unfortunate misclick. Whew. Like shooting fish in a magical journey. That's exactly what Peanut's doing this game. SKT just watched the G2 game. They said, oh, that was pretty dominating. Watch us. Yeah, watch us do this. Oh. All right, watch this again. It's actually genius from such a gold deficit. You just group up and you nullify the advantages by Going on single target, watch Stark as well. Prioritizing Bang, this is all great. Peanut finds his way into a fight, but he doesn't really finish anybody off. Zoning ultimate from Ziggs, it's all fantastic. Just the portal at the very end, the blind faith in Archie, the willingness to commit to whatever is going on here is what eventually bites them in the book. Yeah, Peanut able to clean up a couple. Hooney softening him up for him. He's just waiting to knock him down. That equalizer has everyone so ridiculously low. I love Archie taking that. <laughs> It hurts. It, it hurts, hurts Trevor. As well. <laughs> and you know, the second you click that portal, you're like, oh, no, no, this ain't gonna be good. 11 and 0 on Peanuts Lee Sin. We come out of a replay because, of course, the Marines are gonna get a double kill. Naturally. Levi says, you know what, Peanut? I think you got a few kills. I wanna try and match it. 6 and 2 right now. Oh, Peanut is looking for the 1v2, but it's a 1v4. I'm not sure he realizes it as the Marines are closing in. Oh, <laughs> Peanut takes down stock. Can he win a 1v3? I think he can. Yeah, four-man pinch on Peanut, but he says, I am not trapped in here with you. You are trapped in here with me, and he roar sacks his way out of that one. Okay, screw it. Peanut's already broken the pre-15 kills. Now, the most kills in a game, in a game at MSI, was set by oh BRTT. It was 18. Peanut is getting close to that. 13 and 0. Tempered Fate locks him down. One, two and a half. Archie's now the target. He's got the no support. Here. Peanut follows it through for his 14th kill. Wolf, is he going to steal it? He's got the Devourer on. Actually, who he does at the end. Okay, going to finish that. 18 kills by a single player. BRTT set the record at MSI play-ins. <laughs> Peanut beats it before 20 freaking minutes. I think he can. I mean, he's 14 and 0. If he hits a Q on anybody, you bet your ass he's taking it. Oh, he's, he's looking for it. Can, can, <clears throat> I, I am very fortunate to have two color casters alongside me. What is your analytical Opinion. Yeah, break it down for us, Mitch. Of, of this game. Yeah, you know, when, when the Bard is not on the level of Krepo, this is exactly what happens. <laughs> you know? It all comes down to how they leash the Krugs. Yeah, they, they, never, they, they never started Krugs. They so that, was the, start Krugs. that was their fatal flower here. And then, yeah. Peanut, Trevor, he sees the opening and he goes for it. Oh, he does indeed. Hooney's going to snipe down Levi. Hooney, 3 four, 4. He wants to get in on the action as well. He gave Peanut an assist. He, He's probably question marking Peanut <laughs> Uni right now. He's like, bro, what the hell? <laughs> it's the oh. Peanut show.
Well, look, Gigabyte Marines, okay. Um, remember, second phase of the round, Robin, they have five games left to play. The expectation is at some point the Nexus will get killed. Yeah. But luckily for the Marines, they've got the most difficult opponent out of the way today. And the next two days, they've already taken down a few of their opponents, you know, WE as well as TSM, and they can try bounce back because they could have also beaten G2. Yeah, there's 20 kills right now between the junglers. 13 minutes in the game. This is just... I think he's just farming just calmly. He's like, <laughs> you guys do your, like, so all you things. I'm just gonna get the CS, hit my power yeah. spike, and if it all fails. The turrets. <laughs> yep. Okay, we're gonna have more fights because, of course, we are. Bang's looking for Stark. Stark Stop. actually cancels his ultimate, throws down a slicing maelstrom. Now Hooney's under some pressure from Archie and Optimus. Peanut missed a skill shot. That's not something I've seen in 13 minutes. Now Wolf is gonna try to take the blocks. Go <laughs> oh! Levi pops him backwards. Levi's gonna get through the gray health. Here comes Bang. Spray and Prey has already been used, end of the line. Wolf gets the flash on the heel from Bang. Wolf still stays alive, collateral damage falls short. These are actually pretty high level skirmishes across the border. Obviously you can't deny Peanut when he's this far ahead, but everybody's playing extremely well around the abilities that can be used by their opponents. I mean, Levi has actually gotten really strong for himself here too. He can definitely take down pretty much anyone besides Peanut. Okay, where is Peanut? He's gonna look for yet another kill. Remember, he's got to get to 18 kills. And SKT will finally take down their second turret in the game. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, 18 kills in a single game. That's what BRTT did during the play-ins. And that's what uh, the next record we're trying to break is, because, you know, these arbitrary stat records, I'm a huge fan of them. Oh, yeah. Stat team keeps feeding me the numbers. And Trevor, how long has this Cloud Drake been alive, though? Um, oh, you've put me in a, in a tough position. It's going to be around seven and a half minutes, because I did see Peanut picking up that first Cloud Drake around 6.40, 6.50. I don't know if you're familiar with this, uh, Azale, but whenever uh, Trevor runs out of things to talk about, he, he loves to talk about, like, Dragon lifetime spans. I find it interesting when a team opts to ignore a Dragon for 30 to 40 minutes. Did you know SKT actually has one of the highest priorities on, on the Wind Dragon compared to any other team in the world? You see, connoisseur of interesting, informative sets. Thank you, Azale. No problem. For no actually, problem. you know, That's what elevating the level of this cast <laughs> because I tried to educate Crepo and Deficio in, in the, the, the beauty of these numbers, but I just... feel you, you know, and we struggled for, for a long time with the Cloud Dragon, you know. It's you nice guys to tried to make Cloud Dragon great again, but uh, it was <laughs> it was a little in vain. I'm still not on the It was never not great. <laughs> exactly. That's the that's, problem. That's what you fail to realize here, Crepo. <laughs> but that's the beauty light. We can always learn. Alright, Trev. Is, is that it? We oh, can always learn. Okay, okay, Sorry. good to know. All right, so 15 minutes, you're saying, buddy? 15 minutes has gone by. Where's the last outer turrets? In the mid lane, of course. SKT have taken top and bottom. We're going to have some more shenanigans. Tempered Fate flashed away from instantly from yeah. Bang. Got to respect the Golden Crown. I got to respect the International Crown. SKT, the greatest of all time. We're going to take the second dragon. This one around eight minutes. Okay, we'll see what the next elemental break is. Trust me greatly, Stark is looking to get roasted here by Huni. Actually, Huni with Blade of the Ruined King is in trouble. That's is he? slicing Maelstrom in the overheat. Huni picks up the kill. It was but the scratch for Huni. Fights his way out. That's what happens. You have no MR against that rumble. The peanut hits a few. Doesn't follow it. Baited breath. I'm waiting to see if he decides. Sonic Wave this time around. Just behind Slay. And SKT will take down the last outer turret. <laughs> Just keeping. You know, extending. Optimus is tagged, he's caught out! And that's uh, not the next kill for Peter right there. Faker steals it away. Ah, oh, Huni and Faker, they just keep stealing. This record's not going to get broken. It's starting to feel like playtime is over for SKT. They're knocking down all the turrets, they're taking the dragons, and they are getting They probably look up in the crowd and they see Koma standing in the single role, just <laughs> silently shaking his head, and they're like, oh boy. I, you know what? Actually, I mean, the Marines have taken a tower, so this is improvement. They've also potentially taken more kills. I can't remember what the kill score was uh, from day one. All right, Peanut, Sonic Wave, jumps onto Archie. Dragon's Rage, he's stunned against the wall. Peanut might go down, end of the line! Levi shuts him down! And Archie almost died there, but Faker now in trouble. All right, Wolf has been able to devour Faker. Gigabyte Marines don't know what retreat means. Typical, they retreat when I say that. <laughs> and they decide not to chase onto SKT. 
They're still down 8,000 gold, but they're just willing to, to dance. Yeah, that, that is their style. For a team down so far behind, they constantly keep grouping, though. They don't play on three lanes, trying to match up the farm. They really just want to fight their way out and hopefully surprise their opponents. Use the hubris against them. I'm actually really glad you bring that up because during days... Oh, he got it! Uh, did Hooney steal red buff as well? Uh, he's wearing red buff. Man! You know, Stark during uh, days one and two actually had the highest uh, teammate proximity of all top laners because he does it, things like this, spins it around with his team waiting for his fight. I actually thought the red buff was maybe going to get Archie, just that little heal before going through the tunnel actually saved him. Yep, Self-cast W, get into the portal. Let's see, every time we come out of replay, we just got to make sure there's not more fighting going on. It's been a while since Pina has actually gotten a kill. It's been probably like five or six minutes, something like that. It has to be something wrong. Performance dip for Pina here. Yeah, yeah it's a pretty worrying trend. It really, really is. Uh, Stock's not going to get run down here by Wolf and Bang. They pick it up relatively easily, despite the slicing Maelstrom. And yeah, 31 kills on 19 minutes. SKT, how do they close this game out? I mean, the next Cloud Drake really could enable these uh, rotations between lanes. However they want. That's the answer <laughs> to this one. All right, I'm actually going to ask the set team, how many total kills were in the game the last time the Marines and SKT played? You know you have a top back button. I do, but but I you know I like the, the viewers at home to follow along with Join the conversation. Because we do have a stats team. It's a lot of hard work here to help feed me. Useless yeah, definitely. Like they, they keep their excels updated. Refresh your pivot tables daily. Make sure the stats are up to date. Let's get D closing in. Look at this knockdown some more turrets. I mean, yeah. they, they can pretty much close this out, I think, whenever they want, but they're having some fun. Yeah. They're playing on three lanes. That does make them prone to pick. So this is what the composition from the, from the Geek by Marines wants to do on an even field. You play on three lanes, we'll temper fate. We'll weave as well. We'll find you off guard, and we also have a ton of wave clear. The problem is, let's get a little bit ahead. Oh, yeah, a little bit ahead. Definitely been able to respond to everything the Marines have thrown at them. There's no surprise. But yeah, those three outer turrets are down. Dragon's coming up soon as the inner turrets are going to break through. And this is the uh, magical play by playtime where we talk about the wave clear of yeah. Talia and Ziggs and Graves and how useful it is installing. What a fantastic point, Trevor. Oh. Thank you so much, Trevor. Let's uh, take a look at the item builds as well. Oh, we should indeed. Morella Nomicon's picked up by Optimus and Slay. Levi's got that black cleaver and Wolf and Bang. They are the targets. Teleport's coming down from Hooney. They're not going to find a stun yet until Wolf and Bang. Hooney shoots out the equalizer. Stark is being burned alive. Not going to die just yet. Levi's up in the top. That's one and two for SKT. All right, well played by Archie. He was looking for a double stun and then a really great positioning by Bang. He stayed just out of range for the second part of part two to proc from top Kenshin to him. And now Faker is looking for a kill of his own. And he does it with the shockwave. Support picked up by Hina the first time these teams met. 37 kills in total was secure. We're at 35 right now. And they're going straight for the Baron here. The 20-minute Baron pings onto it right away. I want to see the drive-by steal. Optimus Weaver walls over and goes <laughs> full Neo from the Matrix, just like sliding down. Tack, tack, tack. Takes down the Baron. <laughs> and that um, is not happening, is it? Uh, nah, because it's on cooldown, I'm afraid. Ah, no, otherwise, that's exactly what would have happened. It'll happen in the sequel. Right? It'll happen in the sequel. There was no sequel. Yeah, the sequel is always worse than the No, there's, there is no. They only made one Matrix movie. Oh, you're right. You're right, actually. They did. Yeah. I wonder why they never made a second or a yeah, third. It was such a good movie. It would have made a great series, right? Like two or three, like Star Wars. It would have been great. A trilogy. Uh, yeah, things happen. No, the, we already saw it. Like the, the angled bar Q went on top Kenshin, but it was just out of range to proc into Bang right here. And then it's obviously super easy collapse. Peter can't find that record, man. He's looking for it, but uh, Faker, that's the spoil of fun. I, I'm gonna spoil a little bit of fun and step back and just say like how how surprised and amazed I am at every single Marines game. I know they're gonna do it. I know they're gonna play aggressive and just pick fights, but it never ceases to amaze me just how they do it, no matter who their opponents are. Yeah, the magic. The first time they whipped out that lane shot, I was like, come on. They can't get away with this every time. They have to like... <laughs> and then they actually surprised us by playing a super standard game last game. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I mean, I like that they stick to their play style, right? This is a team that is trying to improve, that has unlocked a spot for the GPL, for Worlds, and they are such a dominant team in their region that it's extremely likely that they will claim that world spot. So they are trying to practice. They are trying to improve here as much as they possibly can. And, and despite that, they're a legitimate contender in this tournament. They have been doing very well. They really have. Down in the bottom lane, Stark's being jumped on here once again by Bang and Wolf. Levi's been exhausted. Look at that burst from Bang. I'd like to let you know, Crepo, that uh, that dragon actually survived less time than it's taken for Peanut to find his next kill. 
Last time Peanut killed anybody was around 12 minutes in a day. It's been that long. Fascinating. I think he's underperforming from his, you know, early game expectations. I mean, it tends to happen to SKT junglers. There's an expiration date on them. <laughs> uh, play good for a while. You got sub. You win a world championship, and then you get kicked out of your team. So maybe it's time for Peanut to uh, hang up the mouse and keyboard. Now we're going to see. He's going to take down another tower looking for Optimus. Dragon's Rage is going to find not just yet. Holds on to the trigger. Two towers taken down. It was a zoning play from Peanut. All outer turrets are secured for SKT. They extend the lead to 16,000 gold. Right, wind in the sails, three Cloud Dragons. Bang right here, walking to Levi. All right, Levi's gonna have to dash away into the line and collateral between the uprights. He's been playing some football. We are in Brazil after all. SKT dodge everything. Peanut, I mean, Peanut just can't seem to get any kills. The Gigabyte Marines are playing pretty safe here, actually for the most part, around him. And you can come back from like a 70,000 gold deficit. Great teams have done it in the past. Need a lot of wave clear, a lot of stalling. Maybe an Anivia, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> if only they drafted the Anivia. I mean, there is a there is that saying in English that history repeats itself, right? Yeah, tends to. Is, is today the day? Probably not, but it would be the most magical to come back of all. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Uh, SKT will close this out soon enough. They go 6-0. Goodbye, Marines. I'm gonna look to the, the rest. They of the kill the War Trevor. They're setting up for the turret. They're walking in the base. It's falling low. It drops down. Another turret for SKT. So glad you got some play-by-play -play practice this split. Uh, <laughs> Ready to cover for me. Really on point there. Yeah, I definitely. Just hide. Guy was happening here. All right, Bang's gonna get caught out. Decent cosmic binding. It'll save Archie's life for a few seconds longer. But look at your mini map. Fina in the mid lane. Huni in the top lane. Now Huni's in transition to join the rest of SKT. He's challenging Levi to a duel. Fists at dawn. He's bringing a. Uh, was it a Tommy gun? Shotgun? I think uh, this. I it's actually a shotgun, but it, with a Tommy gun in the skin. Yeah, yeah. Just it's makes a, a lot it, of sense. It's a Tommy gun that shoots like spread rounds. Yeah. The physics are unique to Runeterra and. Nope. Uh, Legal Legends, man. They don't care about your ballistics. Yeah, it's really I mean, look. ruining my immersion right now. <laughs> <laughs> this game. Everything else, you know. Both on fire bears and, <laughs> and ninjas throwing stars with lightning. That's all fine, but. <laughs> the yeah, the Tommy gun shotgun. That crossed that the line here for me. <laughs> I was okay with the dog, you know? But hey, not this. I like the pug. I think the pug is amazing. Yeah. Right, bang, one on you. two. Levi's gonna come in to help out, but I think Optimus may be dead before anything can happen. Collateral damage comes down. More of Mount Mortis saves Bang's life. Optimus tries to <laughs> bait Bang. Seismic shove, though, misses its target. And Bang screams rat a tat tat Optimus goes splat. Wolf is eating some dinner. Then he takes down Levi in the back end of the fight. Was he baiting or was that a poison tick cancelling his uh, glide? I don't even know. Could be that one too. Maybe uh, it was low enough that he would die to the turret. Tied for kills with their day one matchup. Flash forward from Bang. He's got a lot of life steal. That's going to break the record. Faker gets another 40 kills in 25 minutes. SKT can now knock over these inhibitors. Uncontested. The second death time is on multiple targets. And the destination is the same. We knew this was very likely to happen. SKT to smash the Gigabyte Marines. But the journey was ever so pleasant again in this game. Such a magical journey by SKT. Definitely. Sniping off the Gigabyte Marines at every opportunity. All right, they've broken the record, unfortunately, for Peanuts. He's going to need a Quadro or a Penta to break the most kills in a single game. Optimus is the target, gets booted backwards, he's flashed to safety, Faker's on a rampage. Not over yet, Faker attack and dissonance, sending the ball forward over and over. A tongue lashing and a whipping on a stock. Nexus turn number one goes oh, down. Faker gets another, another fountain. The equalizer's burning down the Gigabyte Marines, and they are aced. Peter has his 15th kill of the game, and that's it for the game. SK Telecom knock over the second Nexus turret. And after 46 kills, remain undefeated at MSI 2017. And it was a fun one. I mean, we got what we were expecting. Sorry, you were expecting 46 kills? I was expecting a bloodbath, and that is what was delivered to me. I loved the first matchup that they had. I loved the second, and I hope we get to see a third. Look, they level two gank faker. They made his bodyguard angry, and we see the ensuing results. I just love the Marines. I'll say it. They are such an entertaining team to watch. I think they're making a lot of fans here at MSI. These guys have been underestimated so many times. 
and yes, they got crushed by SKT, but they are putting up great performances against so many teams, and they're playing really fun games. It's also a playstyle that scales against just weaker teams because there's, there's this unrelenting aggression where they, they build a synergy in these fights. It will work against teams that aren't just as good individually or as a team macro-wise. I also think this could